السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, uh, Dear brothers and sisters and, and everyone was anywhere and everywhere I'd like to thank you for actually being with us today and today we'll be talking about this difficult subject which uh, is prepared uh, by uh, my colleague and others and I thank uh, Brother Ali Shawa for making the media production for uh, this uh, presentation. Today I'm going to talk about economy and one of my young uh, friends was, uh, can we move the second slide please? Hello? Can you move to second slide, please? Uh, one of my young friends was uh, telling me, frankly, that this, this, this is not your speciality. Why you should be talking about uh, uh, something which you are not specialized in? I told him uh, it is something be prepared for uh, the common, not, not for the intellectual or specialized people in economy. Because too many countries now, and especially in the North Africa and Middle East, and in African countries, are coming uh, about post-conflict, and uh, actually after armed conflicts, after armed conflicts, and and uh, they need to restart building their economy, their economy from bottom to up, bottom up. And uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it is not, uh, this is not a, a lecture for intellectuals. It's a lecture for people who are uh, having less knowledge of economy, and in the simplest way. It's not an academic lecture for a special intellectual group, since most of nations in developing countries are eager for making the necessary social change, and some of them were in a state of armed conflicts. It became a compelling duty and necessity to agree on the simplest way of building the national economy of these countries from bottom up, as I mentioned before, and to create for such nations a stable, sustainable economy based on increasing the number of labor force. Why I'm saying the number of labor force? Because after this long term or protracted armed conflict in certain countries like Libya, like Iraq, like uh, Yemen, like Syria and other countries uh, in Africa, a lot of people have not been to schools, have not been to universities, and there's a lot of unskilled workers among the citizens of these countries. That's why you have to create an economy to help those unskilled workers and to employ as many as we can in this process of building the economy, national economy, bottom up. Uh, in my own simple way, I made all these uh, definitions to make it easy for actually the laymen and laywoman in the street, for the salesmen and the saleswoman, and for uh, uh, young uh, graduates or young students in the universities to make it uh, economy uh, made easy to understand. One of the definition is economy for me is the productivity for every citizen. Yeah, it depends on the ability of the citizen to become productive. If I give an example, if you are uh, in a job which you should be working for up to eight hours or 10 hours, if your productivity is one hour only or half an hour or two hours, that means that you are not sharing positively in building the national economy of your country. The second is uh, capital movement among different categories of people. 
What does it mean? Is the ability of people, the purchasing power of people. If we have the money, if we have the jobs, if we have all these sort of things, we'll be able to go out to do the shopping. So the money will go around from one, 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 one uh, area to another area. So I want to do shopping. I want to do five, buy food, buy clothes, buy shoes, uh, buy uh, oil, buy it from my car, buy petrol from my car. Uh, go to the cinema, go to the theater, go to a football match with my children, go for go for a holiday as tourists and so on. So this is the, this is the, the, the ability of the individual to buy the purchasing power. The, the number three definition is the capital cycle in the local market. When you are having a local market and in this local market at least uh, three to four hundred tables, uh, for for uh, very low uh, income salesmen and women, these salesmen and women might have a, might be dealing in a budget with about hundred or two hundred euro. That means this four hundred tables equivalent to about forty thousand euro. And this is the, the 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 power or the 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 capital of the market on the day, but before and after. Uh, going to the market, this capital will be going around to different areas in purchasing, producing, and marketing, and actually uh, selling and buying other items. So the, the capital cycles of the local market might be to my, might multiply, might multiply the, the capital for one fold, two fold, three fold, or four fold, or five folds. Uh, it's also called a social movement. What do you mean by social movement as an economy? It's moving between uh, satisfaction and uh, acceptance of the of the citizens themselves. If the if the citizens accept the growth of the of economy, this will be satisfied. Uh, this is what we call it the uh, social movement moving between satisfaction and acceptance. Also, more definition to make it simple and easy. It becomes the economy becomes an income for everyone, a job for every young, a house for every family, a class for every child, a lesson for every, for, for every student, a hospital for every sick man and the woman, a help for every crippled or disabled people, safety for every citizen is for every soul because once the economy is good and you have an income for yourself and the income for your son income for your daughter income for your family you'll be able to have an easy life to enable you to think for the future to dream for the country dream for every self uh, happiness for every heart guide for every lost light for every blind a way for every aim and the future for every generation this is some of the simplest definition that will make, make, make anyone to understand economy as a, a simple process of rebuilding the economy of the country itself. There's some other aspects of social welfare which reflects the growth rate or reflects the growth of economy or the value of the economy or the quality of the economy, which is, as I mentioned before, as having a stable, sufficient income to provide dignified life for every citizen, providing suitable social services for everyone, protecting and preserving national assets and natural resources, increasing the local productivity, increasing the purchasing power of the public, and uh, exports becomes more than the import, so you have to have to create the reserve for the country. This is some of the simplest definition that we can actually uh, bring to the public to let them to understand what do you mean by economy. Uh, second slide talks about some warning or some threats. Uh, which you can see the three uh, no, no for borrowing, no for printing banknotes. Uh, no for making taxation the main income or the main financial source for the state general budget, and no for security and military clampdown of the civil liberty space. 
not for borrowing this is at all because all these countries which i mentioned them before are coming from mostly armed conflicts or social revolution or a kind of revolution to make a social change once we go to borrow money from world bank or from or from international monetary fund unfortunately this will cripple the economy and will not be able to build the economy let me take you to a journey to tell you what do you mean by world bank and what do you mean by imf which is international monetary fund both of them are un agencies uh, created after the second world war both headquarters are in washington dc uh, the the world bank is 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 a, is a bank lending money to countries to for development and for some time rehabilitation and relief and this decide the policy of 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 the financial and the regulation and the economy of the country uh, unfortunately the the permanent uh, president or chairman of the world bank is american over the last 15 uh, 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 terms of the bank, it was 15 American uh, uh, president or, or uh, chair of the bank. While on the other hand, the IMF is another uh, UN agency, which is deciding the policy as well, finance, marketing, and all these sort of things. And it should be uh, governed by the European. Over the last 15 session of, of the since 1947 up to now, uh, five of the uh, president of the IMF were uh, French. Uh, three of them were actually uh, American. Two were Swedish. And but unfortunately, uh, USA has a veto in on on the IMF. So in another way, when the when the countries met in 1944 in America uh, to try to decide for the world economy and world trade and world finance, actually, they created these two institutions to control and to make the policy for these two institutions, inshallah. Uh, so this is the first two nodes. And there's a lot of experience, negative experience by uh, the countries who were borrowing money from World Bank and from International Monetary Fund. The second point of no group is no for printing banknotes or coinage currencies without having what? And if we are going to print banknotes, we have to have with us a strategic foreign currency reserve, a strategic gold reserve, real and truly valued national products and services this will be measured or measuring the value of of uh, uh, of, of the assets of the country before we starting to print the banknotes if we don't have those and we keep printing the banknotes the banknotes will become unfortunately like paper notes paper notes and eventually this will lead to the rise of a higher inflation rate crippling the state economy and changing it from a stable economy into a failing state and failing economy, unfortunately. The, the number three, the no number three is for making the taxation to be the main source of income for the state general budget. In certain countries, especially if there's no democracy there, it's, it's a military run or security run states, or dictatorship run states, they don't have high productivity rate of the individual citizen, and they keep making the taxation higher, 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 and actually to cripple the economy as well. Number four, no is no for security and military clampdown of civil liberty space. Once you shrink the civil liberty space, this will become a very difficult for the people to grow economy in, 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 in a country where the civil liberty space does not exist, or when the civil liberty space becomes very shrinked and we cannot actually control the, the freedom of movement of people. So these are the warnings. How to build the economy? 
as you can see in the images to images, it's from from the from the seed you treat to the bread you eat. That's my slogan: from the seed you treat in the in 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 the laboratory to the wheat you eat coming from the bakery. This kind of big cycle, which involves a lot of industries, parallel and simultaneous industries, to help to help to help in building the bread industry. Our uh, uh, national economy will be based on two basic foundations. First one, which is number A, based on the national open market policy. National, not international. National open market policy to protect the country from the international open market policy, which come to invade the country and destroy its economy. The second uh, foundation will be building the community cross-cutting, community cross-cutting, parallel, simultaneous, and complex industries. Yani while we are making the bread industry, we build another industries beside it simultaneously. I will explain it in the coming four and the in the coming slides. Number A, uh, building our economy, the national economy, on open market policy, which is being built on the principle. Why I am talking about uh, open market, national open market policy, national open market policy. Uh, the, the strategy of this policy is to encourage, support, and protect the national products and protect it from the international imported products. If our national open market policy strategy is to create a, a strategy to encourage, support, and protect the national products. How? By these seven points. First of all, free movement of local products from one government to another. Number two is reducing, and if possible, or abolishing taxation on essential commodities produced locally. Number three, reducing off and, if possible, abolishing taxation on exported goods produced locally. Uh, number four, increasing taxation on imported goods. Number five, provide tax grace period between three to five years on the local startup companies, businesses, factories, workshops, private local markets, and others. Number six, encouraging and supporting young people entrepreneurial initiatives. Number seven, spreading the culture of building as many as we can of local community markets. Local community markets. These seven points actually will help us to start building up the local economy, especially if we are coming from a post-conflict uh, time, uh, time, inshallah. Uh, the second point is how to build the economy, is building what we call it cross-cutting, parallel, simultaneous, and the complex industries. As I mentioned, beside building uh, the, the industry of bread making, we have to create other industries to serve how to let the seed of the wheat to become a, a loaf of bread. And some of these industries like bread, like meat, milk products, as well as others. I'll give the example today with you, if you look at actually the Zoom uh, with you, is the slaughterhouses industry. To have this slaughterhouse industry, we have to, it has to be served by 16 or 17 or 18 other industries, such as first one, scientific research for animal breeding, breeding, number one. Number two, industry, livestock farming. Number three, industry is animal feed industry. Number four, industry is animal health, welfare, veterinary services. Number five, selling and buying the meat. It's marketing for it. Number six, animal transportation, which is livestock transportation. 
Number seven, building the, the building itself of the slaughterhouses. Number eight is uh, tan, uh, training butchers. And you have to train, keep training butchers and workers in the, in the industry. Number nine, tools needed for slaughtering and skinning. Number 10, recycling slaughter offals. The, the, the remains of the, of the carcass, we have to be recycling it. Number 11, tanning animal skin. Number 12, cooling, freezing, and storage as another industry. Number 13, meat transportation. Number 15, meat canning and processing. Number 16, agriculture farming needed for the meat industry. Number 17, manual unskilled workers. It's another industry. Number 18, it is meat wholesale markets. So when you go from the slaughterhouse as an, as an industry into the parallel, simultaneous uh, uh, cross cutting, and complex industries to find that 17, 18 industry are built beside the slaughterhouse industry. Uh, through each of these parallel simultaneous industries, we can observe other industries as well. Okay, that's if we have the process of meat production from A to Z in our country. But if we depend on importing meat and meat products from abroad, we'll be losing many of these simultaneous parallel industries. And a huge number of job opportunities that cannot be compensated only, only, only by importing meat and meat product because they are cheaper than the local products. It cannot compensate. Cannot compensate. And if we do that, we'll be building, we'll be building the economy of who? Which economy? The economy of the importing countries, not our economy. And we'll be slowing down our economy and maybe affecting it negatively and maybe demolishing it. Okay. Uh, instead, what, what should we be doing? We should be building similar industries to that of the slaughterhouses for what? For textile, for agricultural products, furniture, carpets, clothes and fashion, building materials, medicine and medical products, and other uh, industries inside the community cross-cutting, parallel, simultaneous, and the complex industries. So we might have a central industry but around it, we'll be having 15 or 16 other industries serving it to make it successful. There are some general principles and warning to any one of you, I'd like, I'd like general information. If we're talking about building national economy, first of all, we should talk about the individual. Should have a, should build the economy of the individual, this is number one. Then, because we are coming out post-conflict, we should build the manual and handicraft industry. Okay? Uh, based economy. We should also build a small capital rotation-based economy. A small capital rotation-based economy through what? Through building more community markets. Okay? Number four, increasing the number of manpower because the people in Syria now, they have got 5.5 million people are outside the country, maybe 7 million displaced inside the country, and most of those people become deprived of education and skill training. We need to employ all of them. So we should be focusing on building the manpower of the handicraft and the manual uh, 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 based uh, economy. Uh, no 
no, 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 relying on foreign loans, as I mentioned, with the only bank and with IMF. No for selling national assets or properties. No for closing down companies, demolishing or selling factories. But we can treat this, uh, uh, their losses, through motivation, empowering, training, capacity building of all the workers. We should not destroy or demolish or close down these institutions. We have to increase the ability of citizen by empowering the citizen uh, themselves. We have to have a parliamentary effective uh, independent institution to regulate and to monitor the performance of the government. Uh, we have to follow the principles of transparency, accountability, monitoring and evaluation on the individual basis and with an institution, on the individual and institutional basis. We have to encourage and support and promote and protect the local product, as I mentioned. Encourage, support, promote, protect local products. We have to invest in different aspects of education. Uh, we have to make free movement of goods between different governments. There's no restriction. In some countries, there are. Uh, we have to support the young people initiatives and their enterprise program. Uh, adding higher taxation on imported goods, not on the local product. Number 17, uh, not relying heavily on consumer consumption. Programs which are not stable and consistent. We might, we might, we might promote tourism, but we should not make it the main income. Why? Because it's not stable. Yeah, I, uh, I remember uh, seeing a lot of uh, problems affecting this industry, especially uh, the, uh, uh, when terrorist groups attack one, one country. This kind of terrorist attack will stop the industry immediately. Okay, and this will affect the jobs of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. We should make it as a part of the big package, not the main, as a part of the big package. Importing luxurious and unnecessary products from abroad. Also investing our money in unnecessary projects, which uh, having no public return, such as uh, people love to build uh, cities carrying their name, uh, building big, big buildings, big towers, multi towers, big conference centers, uh, big statues and uh, and landmarks, uh, luxurious places of worship, and others, the the largest, the tallest, the Christmas trees and others, hosting a lot of uh, uh, championship festivals and others which is really is not affecting the economy of people and not, of no benefit to the public. This also, it has to be like actually one of the uh, uh, activities, we should not be investing money in it. In conclusion, uh, I have three points or three foundations. The postulates, which is things, things taken for granted, the taboo and no-go area, and the message to the young people. The postulates, what are the postulates? Things taken for granted. What is this? Let us to declare that there is no poor society living on Earth. No, whatsoever. Why? Because there is a guarantee by the Creator that there's a wealth for every citizen living on the face of earth. Allah has created all societies and created the resources underneath their feet. For as long as they live on the face of earth, even if this is for millions of years to come, 
Whoever denies that is what? Is a traitor, deceptive, liar, and the hypocrite. Those people are trying to convince you that you are you are living in a poor country who don't have any resources, they are liars. Those leaders who want to convince you, convince their people that they are poor, they are like those who do not believe in the presence of God, who is the provider and sustainer of the living, of the lives of everyone on this planet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is no moving creature, no moving creature on earth whose provision is not guaranteed. There is no moving creature on earth whose provision is not guaranteed by Allah. And he, Allah, knows where it lives, where it is laid to rest. Later on, all is written in a perfect record by Allah. This is Surah Hud. Okay. So another way, those postulates take, things take for granted that discover your wealth underneath your feet. Discover your wealth, like we discovered water, we discovered gold, we discovered silver, we discovered the diamond in the middle of the ocean, we discovered uh, gas and oil and others. All these are underneath the feet of every creature of God. This is the postulate. Number two, the taboo and the no-go area. What does that mean? Our economy is not going to be listened to this young men and young women. Our economy is not going to be built by a stroke of luck careless and randomly made individual decisions, selling parts of our homelands, assets, and natural resources, or depending on foreign loans and grants. I'll say this again and again and again and again. Our economy is not going to be built by a stroke of luck, careless and randomly made individual decisions, selling parts of our homeland, assets, and natural resources, or depending on foreign loans and grants. This, 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 does, does, this does not build, these do not build the economy. National economy will only be built inside a wider civil liberty space. I'm telling the countries which are suffering from the dictatorship regime, from the military climbing down, our security clamp down regime. So national economy will only be built inside a wider civil liberty space in the democratic state, not where there is a military or security clamp down on the safety and the freedom of every citizen. Such clamp down and shrinking of civil liberty space will eventually lead to what? Sooner or later to the selling out of assets and natural resources of the country. As you see it nowadays, we see it clearly every day, everywhere. And those who do that are not honest and honored by the public. Economy is not going to be built by this, by verbal deception, verbal sweetener, inflatable promises, or useless unplanned initiatives. And those who do that are selfish, dishonest, and corrupt individuals, and not even considered to be loyal to their own country. People come on the television as leaders and make jokes, silly jokes, stupid jokes, ignorant jokes. So economy is not going to be built by verbal deception, verbal sweetener, inflatable promises, or useless unplanned initiatives. The taboo again, our economy will be built by the four arms of the believing citizens. Believing in what? 
the believing people in creating dignified life for everyone, bringing credibility, integrity, effectiveness, dedication, and commitment of every citizen, protecting, preserving, and developing the assets and natural resources of their homelands for the future generation. It goes together. It goes together. It goes together. Building the national economy for a country is a processing process of what? A processing process of strategic, structured, complicated, entangled, and long-term procedures. I say it again. Building the national economy of a country is a processing process of strategic, structured, complicated, entangled, and long-term procedures. And not, and not, and not commercial transaction or business deeds only. Building economy is not commercial transaction and business deeds only. Can you deal with the voice, please? Uh, number three, this is my message to thank people. The message of building three independent national economy is exactly the same as the message of building a free and decent life for every citizen of the country. The message of building the free independent national economy is the same as the message of building a free and decent life for every citizen of the country. The only people who will be able to do that are those individuals who are the believing, sincere, experienced professionals in different aspects of economical lives concerning citizens and state and the country. They have to have the experience. Let us declare to you let us declare to you that what we see as economical growth in some countries in the in the east is not following an economy building process is not following an economy building process but are or is happening because of the processing pro Processes of what? Of stealing assets, natural resources, and tearing apart societies of different countries. This kind of fake economical growth in certain countries, different areas, and we know these countries, not because it's following an economy building process, but because of stealing assets, natural resources, and telling apart societies of different countries. It's up to you, young people, to realize that the most sincere amongst you are those ones who will be able to build the national economy of their country. Only, only those people who are sincere, dedicated, committed, and believing in their country. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Yusuf, and Allah defeats his command, but most people do not know. So this was my conclusion, my conclusive message to young people, to all of you. Coming back to this simple I, I'm trying to make it simple, uh, unfortunately, but I have some, some difficulties in the voice. And But it is up to us as young people to believe that we can build our national economy from bottom up through engaging a lot of manual workers with us, through building local markets, 
through encouraging the handicraft industry, through not borrowing money from abroad, through having to widen the civil liberty space, through building a reserve for the country, whether it is on, on gold reserve, foreign currency reserve, or product, national product reserve. All this will enable us to do that, to build that. And building economy is a long-term complicated process. It's not actually something which happened like this. And if I take the country, uh, the message like for Syria or for Yemen or for, uh, or for Libya and others, if we have peace treaty today and we manage to have a civil liberty space, semi-stable or stable government, we have to take at least 15 to 20 years to finish the process of building the national economy and make it as strong as it could be. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And uh, maybe you might have realized that uh, there's an echo of the voice and we'll be treating it next time. Next week, inshallah, we'll be talking about Yemen. Yemen, a humanitarian response. Yemen history and Yemen uh, uh, icons and others. Inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.